Why hello everyone and welcome. So today I want to make a video talking about Threadripper, the AMD Threadripper and why you might want to consider it or you might want to stay away from it. This might be a very interesting video, bit of a talking head video, but I think it's incredibly important. It's a video that I wish I watched before I bought and built my Threadripper computer. Let's get started. So for those of you that do not know, the AMD Threadripper platform is some of AMD's highest end CPUs. The AMD Threadripper that I have is the 3990X. This is a 64 core processor. That is a lot of cores. The base clock is 2.9 gigahertz and it does turbo to 4.3. In terms of the rest of my build out though, the rest of my specs, my motherboard is an MSI Creator TRX40. I really do like this motherboard with four PCIe slots and also 10 gigabit ethernet on the back. And don't forget the three M.2 SSDs. That is just a lot of features packed into this board. The RAM I'm using is the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. I have 256 gigabytes of this stuff. It is not cheap. And uh, the cooler I'm using for my Threadripper is by Cooler Master. Links in the description. This is an air cooler, so do not expect to do any sort of overclocking whatsoever. You definitely need water cooling for that. But this air cooler works just good enough. The last thing I want to mention about my specs are the graphics cards. Plural? Not really. Um, the first graphics card I had was an NVIDIA 2080 Super. This did me very well for a while, but I did recently upgrade to an AMD RX 6900 XT. The real reason why I made the switch, though, was because of the video RAM. This new AMD 6900 XT has 16GB, while the 2080 Super only had eight gigabytes. But enough of the specs. Why did I consider a AMD Threadripper and why should you or why are you? Well, first off, it just has to do with the raw power. I do a lot of video and photo editing. I am transcoding a lot of video, changing formats, changing resolutions to deliver to my clients. I'm also batch processing thousands of photos typically every day. And with so much batch work, as I'll call it, the raw power of my computer was gonna be very important to me. And 64 cores on a computer sounded like a no brainer. At the end of the day, if I can make my computer run faster, then that's more jobs essentially I can complete in a shorter time. That is incredibly important to me. There also is multitasking. With so many cores, I knew that not all of my programs were going to utilize all of the cores. So that means that there are many times I can still export a video while doing other things on the computer with minimal slowdowns in theory. The Threadripper platform was also intriguing to me because of the PCIe lanes available. I mentioned how much I like my motherboard, and the motherboard is partially made possible because of the Threadripper. With 64 lanes of PCIe, that gave me a lot of flexibility with my motherboard. Meanwhile, a like Ryzen 9 only has 24 lanes of PCIe. 
And while I was planning out my Threadripper build, I was considering to put multiple graphics cards in at the same time, setting up virtual machines. That's a topic we're gonna talk about a little later, but I just wanted the flexibility. So at bare minimum, that is why I was interested in the Threadripper. I'm sure many people have many reasons why they would want such a beast of a computer. But let's start talking about the actual performance. What actually I discovered while using it. Well, first off, when I set up this computer, yes, it was fast, but I was digging around on forums and discovered that Windows 10 is not fully optimized exactly for a 64 core computer. Yikes. However, if you do get the Windows 10 Pro for workstation, that will actually help speed up your computer and utilize it properly. So like any nerd, when I got the Threadripper set up, I wanted to check out the benchmarks of this computer. And so I fired up Geekbench first off, and I got a multi-core score of over 25,000 points. That is very nice money well spent. However, I did notice my single core score was a bit lower compared to other processors. Don't get me wrong, I knew that was coming. With a base clock of only 2.9 gigahertz, that is what you can expect when a lot of other processors have base clocks that are far higher than that. Of course, I was not done yet with benchmarking. I wanted to fire up Synbench uh, R23, and for multi-core, I got over 74,000 points. Still absolutely remarkable. But when I looked at the single core scores, really started to hit me. My Threadripper hit a little over 1200 on the single core CPU test on Synbench and just above it not too far ahead we're seeing Ryzen 5 3600X we're seeing Ryzen 7 3700X we have a Ryzen 3 3300X like these are some low end chips that cost only a couple hundred bucks I spent $4,000 on my Threadripper, it's okay. The Threadripper still has a lot going for itself, but I just, I wasn't happy inside. At the end of the day, benchmarks still really don't mean much. You actually have to put the computer through its paces. And I do a lot of editing on DaVinci Resolve. Currently, it's DaVinci Resolve 17. And... The performance is good, but it's not the best. You see, even though timeline performance and rendering can be quick, the sweet spot for DaVinci Resolve is about 10 to 14 cores. As soon as you go above that, you know, 16 plus cores, 32 cores, 64 cores, the diminish of return here, how much you get out of such a high-end CPU really starts to go down because the software is just not optimized for a 64-core processor. I don't use Premiere Pro often, but Premiere Pro by Adobe also seems to be in the same boat where the performance sweet spot, whether it's for playing back or doing rendering, is around the 10 core mark. Again, the software just isn't optimized for it. And then moving on to another piece of software that I use quite often is, and it's not professional, but it's Handbrake, which is, I believe, an open source community program. And that is pretty much optimized for six cores. Now, I'm not surprised by that. But again, this is just where there is so much software that is really not optimized for a large core count. And I even went on Google and I was like, what program supports 64 cores? And there isn't even really a list for it. One of the first links that comes up is with the new AMD 64 processor, what would you do with it? 
and people are talking about running Crisis 3 without a GPU, which is a video that Linus Tech Tips did, and that was a really awesome video, but that doesn't help not the average person, but someone that is trying to figure out, is this processor right for them? Even looking at product pages on like Adobe Premiere and what specs are recommended. You know, for a processor, Intel 7th Gen or higher, you know, AMD Ryzen 3000 slash Threadripper 2000 series or newer. But that's kind of all it's saying. It's not really talking about how many cores it can support, you know, which one is the best, you know, what is the best bang for the buck. Like, obviously, they don't need to talk about, you know, the, the price to performance gain, but why are we not more transparent in what resources a program is able to utilize? Now, of course, to be clear, you don't need every program to run all 64 cores. That will make multitasking less appealing because at this point, I can edit and export something in DaVinci Resolve and then open up a different video editor or photo editor and just work on something completely different. And sometimes I don't even know that it's happening. But note that I said sometimes. Because all software is different, you're going to find that different pieces of software are going to utilize and affect your computer differently. For example, as I've already mentioned, DaVinci Resolve will not take up all of my CPU power. So while I am exporting, I can then start editing in Lightroom CC. But when I am importing into Lightroom CC or exporting, Lightroom will utilize literally all the RAM I possibly have available. All of it. It does not matter. It'll just decide to use it all. It can't utilize all of the CPU power, but it'll start utilizing just all the RAM. And that's a problem. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm happy that it's utilizing my computer to the best of its ability. But at the same time, it makes my multitasking not work out so well. If only some of my CPU is being used, but all of my RAM is being used, well then Windows 10 is not going to be too happy and it's going to start freezing up on me. Throughout my time using this computer, I have found so many times that a program isn't utilizing all my resources. It's not utilizing all my GPU. It's not utilizing all my CPU. It's not utilizing all my RAM. But Windows 10 is just acting up. File Explorer will crash. It becomes laggy for no reason. These are just weird bugs that make insane multitasking challenging. Whether it is Windows 10 or Windows 11 right now, just the raw compatibility of these high-end processors just isn't always there. Now, don't get me wrong though. I know there are some programs, I know there are some people that can utilize this to its full potential. I might not be an animator or visual effects artist, but I understand that those people could utilize all 64 core processors very well. Just, I feel a lot of us are not in that boat. But really, despite your background, you need to look into what you want out of a computer and what programs you're going to be using. Sure, as I've already said, it's kind of hard to figure out what programs are going to work the best on a 64-core computer. But hopefully, going through some Reddit pages, forums, etc., you can find other people that have used your software and maybe they'll have some advice. Maybe they'll have, you know, some comments on how much it utilized, how good it was on the Threadripper, so on and so forth. Now, in efforts to start closing out this video, I want to finish up with some final topics. First is gaming. As you can expect, 
Gaming does not utilize all of the 64 core processors. Games do not utilize all of those cores. And in fact, gaming performance usually isn't as good on the 64 core Threadripper because of its lower base clock at 2.9 gigahertz. You're much better getting something like a Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 9 from AMD as those processors have higher base clocks and you can get pretty good core counts too. Now, in one of my final topics, I kind of want to loop back to the beginning when I talked about the PCIe lanes and all of the connectivity on Threadripper. Because of all the connectivity, I have been able to install multiple graphics cards on my computer. And because of that, I've been able to set up virtual machines using Unraid. This is a scenario where you're actually utilizing the 64 core processor quite well because you can break up the cores and say, hey, I'm going to have this virtual machine running with 16 cores, another virtual machine running with another 16 cores or whatever the amount of cores you want. So you're taking one computer and dividing it up into two or maybe three or four, however many you might want to build. And that is something that is very appealing to Threadripper. However, you have to be ready to put in some serious time to get that to work. I probably spent one to two weeks straight just trying to get Unraid and video card pass through and all that to work properly. And it's working good enough right this second, but it's not working. It's not working good enough at the same time because I am going to need to rebuild this computer again to try to get all of my little bugs and all that squashed. Hopefully I can do it with Unraid. Now, I know Unraid's not the only software to make virtual machines, but that is an entirely different video. But the point is, having all of these 64 cores does make virtual machines quite nice because I do have so much power. It comes with its own quirks, and it's not going to be for everyone, but it is a use case that could be viable for some people. So at the end of the day, I know this was just a bit of a talking head video talking about my experiences with Threadripper. And really what I want to leave you with is trying to figure out if it's worth it for you. If you're going to just be doing gaming on Threadripper, whether it is the 64 core model, 32 cores or 24 core model, Threadripper is not really made for that. There are better options out there 100%. Now for video and photo editing, for something like what I do, editing YouTube videos, weddings, transcoding a ton of footage, I don't think I would get Threadripper again. I think I'll do better off with something like a Ryzen 9 with a higher base clock and only about 16 cores. Even though at this point I have virtual machines set up and I'm using the computer underneath my desk as two computers, two computers, the base clock definitely is a limiting factor for me. I could definitely use more performance on single threaded applications. Now, don't get me wrong, I do very much like, again, the connectivity aspect of Threadripper, but for me, dealing with these virtual machines just has not been as much fun as I would have hoped. I think I would be better off having multiple computers and just being able to virtually connect to them using Parsec or something else if I needed to get multiple processes, multiple renders done at the same time. Of course, that is also a separate video. So let me know if any of you are interested in kind of some follow-up videos about any of this, because this is a topic that very much interests me, as I do have two Threadripper computers, one here, one in my basement. And I don't know the pure future of them in this house. I do not know, but 
I'm leaning towards changing things up, leaning towards getting something different. I'm not fully sure. But guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you have the Threadripper? Are you interested in getting one? Has this video kind of changed your mind on if you're going to be getting one? I really do wish that the performance and multitasking was a little bit better. But at the end of the day, it just comes down to your workload and how you utilize your computer. And hey, maybe a lot of my issues are actually Windows 10 related. Maybe Linux is actually the better solution. I'm not sure. Again, all things to discover, to figure out, and to make follow-up videos on. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. Hopefully it helped you. I'm Eric. Catch you in the next one.